Welcome to Front Row. Top news in the Virgin Islands is sold only by JTV, making the headlines today. The Progressive Virgin Islands movement presents an initial list of eight for the upcoming general elections. Kedrick Pickering and Myron Walwyn returned to the National Democratic Party. And the British Virgin Islands Chamber of Commerce and Hotel Association is now divided into two. Hear of this and one way the association is making funds. We have the details of these and more when we return. We know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official Bank of Paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us. A bank that gives where it matters the most. For you. For our community. And a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life, we will live well. ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on Popular. Plug into Digicel Plus and get even more entertainment with Disney Plus included. The best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic all in one place. Whenever you want, plug into Plus to enjoy Disney Plus and much more with a home fiber bundle. Sign up today to Digicel Plus.
Welcome back for the news in the details. The race for a new government is on and parties and individuals are presented to especially the voting population. Monday, March 6, 2023, the Progressive Virgin Islands Movement, PVIM, presented a partial slate of candidates for the 2023 general elections. Five slots empty. Districts 3, 5, 6, 7, and 8. They have released the candidates for District 1, Sylvia Moses, District 2, incumbent, Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull, District 4, Paul Hewlett, and District 9, incumbent, Honorable Shireen Flax Charles. What I bring to the table, I'm a fighter. I don't back down. If something is wrong, I'm going to speak it. I'm going to say it. And that, I think, is important. Um, transparency is something that is so integral to us being successful in this territory. And, and so for me, I think those are some of the things I bring to the table. And I also bring hope for our young people. So many of them reach out and they, they can interact with me. They feel comfortable talking to me. We always joke because they approach me as if I'm their age, and I say to them, I'm not as young as I look. <laughs> but those are some of the things that I bring to the table. Well, I just feel that at this point in time, that people needed to see a new face for a start. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of talk around overall about, you know, uh, a lot of people being there and, 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 and some people coming back that are, that are not really looking out for the welfare of the on the being of the territory. the territory. So I felt that was very important. Also somebody that has high integrity. Mm -hmm. So I have been known all my life as somebody with high integrity. As a former public officer, I served as a head of department for two departments, uh, the Department of Inland Revenue uh, and the uh, Department of International Affairs. Um, I also served uh, on, as a member on the PVI tax information ag agreement negotiation team. Mm -hmm. And so I traveled uh, widely on behalf of PVI to negotiate on PVI's behalf uh, for agreements, you know, that would be in our best uh, interest. And so I feel I bring that background and that knowledge, um, information and experience of government um, operations. And I feel I'm, I will be able to, like I say, work on behalf of the people in a higher office. And I am here again, grateful to God, grateful to the people of these Virgin Islands for entrusting me to lead during this time. But I am happy to be joined by a team of strong, dedicated, and integral persons in these district candidates that we have with us today. PVIM has a full slate of candidates for territorial at large representatives. Among them are two first timers, Stacy Mehta, also known as Buddha, and Ingrid Scatliff, former Speaker of the House of Assembly. If not now, then when? In all my 53 years, that's as long as I have been alive. There has never been a more critical time in the life of this territory than now. It is imperative for all of us to understand where we are as a people and where we need to go to overcome the challenges that present themselves before us. The challenges are not just here locally. The challenges are internationally and globally. To stand for elections in our country is a hard decision. It's a very difficult decision for anyone. And for me, I was back and forth on it, right? But I realized that the territory needs healing, if I piggyback on what Ingrid said. You know, I grew up in a territory where when I sat in class, I saw the names of our representatives and I got nostalgic as a child. I was like, I know these people. I want to aspire to be like them. The BVI government invested in me in my undergraduate and my graduate studies. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to come back to the territory. I'm going to do what's necessary. So I started education. So as you may know, I've been in education for 30 years now. So education and youth development. And at this point in time, when I go around the territory and I listen to the young people and the families that I've worked with, they're not voting. They have no interest in leadership. They don't believe that we have integrity, we have accountability. We need to heal. The other two are veterans at the polls, party chairman, Honorable Ronnie W. Skelton, and Shana Smith Archer. For those that don't know, this is the fourth time stepping up on the platform. And the motivation actually came from my nephew. 
I went to his fifth birthday party, party at one of year's daycare. And at that time, we all know what was happening around the country, 2010, 2011. And I was like, you know, these kids are here, five years old, eating cake, not a kid in the world, yeah. Carrie. I was working in the Ministry of Finance at the time, and I was completely worried about what is happening in our country, and more so, what are they going to meet in 10, 15 years? The, the, the discomfort that other people feel about the country, mm. The, because you don't live in a society by yourself, you live in a society with other people and they are uncomfortable and they believe that you can do something about their discomfort. Mm -hmm. I think you should leave your comfort zone and try to help. And that's why I'm back. The question now is, will PVIM make a full list of 13 to contest the elections? In 2019, they contested with nine candidates, five districts and four at large. Among the group presented so far, Skelton, Smith Archer, Turnbull, and Moses all ran in the 2019 elections. They were successful in getting into the House of Assembly with one seat, Turnbull, as he won District 2. Now continuing on the line of politics. It came as a surprise to many when on Friday, March 3, 2023, the National Democratic Party, NDP, announced that former legislator Kedrick D. Pitkerin is on their ballot as he returned after a breakaway following the 2019 general elections. I'm referring to the fact that I had said publicly that I was going to be running on the team. And I had said you know, um, the three political organizations really. And uh, there have been many discussions with various factions and persons and individuals. And uh, the NDP family made a concerted effort to encourage me to, to be joined the organization. They, um, if I may say so, they, they, made a, they put on an all blitz to try and, and get me to, to rejoin the, the fraternity, so to speak. And so, after considering the options and discussing with the people who were closest to me, who were working with me, we came to a decision that at this point in time, certainly the country needs a group of persons working together for the, the betterment of the country. And uh, it turns out that my affiliation with the NDP is a, a natural progression to, to return so that we can now work to build this country to where it was and beyond and build a brighter future for the citizens of this country. While Honorable Pickering was on the road from 2022 campaigning without stating which party he was going with, former Education Minister Myron V. Walwyn was quiet until the March 3, 2023 press conference. And he is contesting the 6th district seat and not a territorial at large like he did in times past. As I said, I, I am indeed running, uh, contesting the elections uh, in District 6. District 6 has a, a very special place in my heart. Many persons may not know this. Um, actually, uh, that is my home district in terms of uh, the first place that I lived, uh, particularly my formative years uh, in the BVI. I must say to you, and a number of persons in this room were asking me if I'm running for election. I kept saying to them, I'm not sure. Matter of fact, I was on the side of not running uh, for election. What changed that? Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a number of calls were coming in for representation in District 6. I listened to the calls. I didn't make any decision on them. But about two months ago, probably a month and a half or so ago, a contingent of six or seven persons came to see me to discuss the issue of District 6. And they came with a variety of concerns. Uh, many had to do with not feeling as if they knew what was going on in the country and that their interest was properly represented in the House of Assembly. They raised the issue of the COI and its implications for the country and the fact that no one told them how the changes that are taking place will affect their lives and how the government interacts 
with the community. Uh, they raise issues on the constitutional review. How will our voice be heard uh, with the concerns that we have? They raise issues about the police act, the police bill, and the possible abrogation of their rights. And their question was, we want someone who could better represent our cause in the House of Assembly, who can ensure that District 6 is not left out, that is not ignored. Someone who we can send anywhere in the world to represent us. They mentioned as well some other things in the district that are of great concern to them. If you go into District 6, you will notice that you have a number of budding entrepreneurs in that district. What is being done for them? One of the plans that the National Democratic Party had was a National Basis Bureau to be able to provide funding and to provide uh, services and assistance for those people who wanted to get into business. Nobody's assisting them with that. They raised the issue of even a simple district office where they could go and bring their concerns and meet their representatives. They mentioned issues of roads and drains, a number of other issues, training facilities um, to assist, assist them, programs for the old, programs for the young, youth unemployment is a major issue. No answers and no responses. And so they came to me and when some, when people come to you and they make a case as compelling as this case, it is very hard for you to say you're not going to represent them. The NDP is yet to announce their slate of candidates for the upcoming elections. Apart from membership dues and fundraising activities, there is another avenue of generating funds for the British Virgin Islands Chamber of Commerce and Hotel Association. I know a lot of people didn't realize the Chamber did an in-room magazine because really it was in the rooms all the time. And we made a, a transition where, you know, it's more visible. So we really want to thank Gary and his team for all the hard work they've gone into bringing this forward. Um, just to also let persons know this doubles as a fundraiser for us because as part of the, the effort, their donation is made to the chamber in form of royalties from the ads. Well, the BVI Chamber of Commerce is also the hotel association. The hotel association has the membership all their properties. So what we do is we do this magazine and create financial reward and royalty for the BVI CCHA. So they get a royalty for helping us to make sure the hotels comply with distribution. So all the advertisers are happy to be in the book because they're getting compliance and it's sanctioned by the hotel association or the BVI CCHA and therefore they have the trust that they know it's getting done right and we were partners. This was the occasion of an appreciation cocktail reception hosted by the producers of the magazine Visit. So I've been involved with the BVI since 2005 and producing magazines under a different name, but um, I, I changed companies, started our, our own, and we renamed it Visit and, and won the bid to the uh, BVI Hotel Association. And we did the first magazine, beautiful magazine, and COVID hit. And then we had to sit on our sideline for two years because obviously the island wasn't open, there was no tourists, and you know, it just didn't make sense. So we're very happy now to be back. Well, I think the, the biggest obstacle at the beginning was COVID and many businesses had been closed or you know, not, not full, full, fully functioning and now everything is great but the first year it was very challenging because you know they had a minimal income and there were very few tourists here but now it feels like they're going you know full steam ahead and it's great to see everybody so happy and thriving the magazine captures all things of virgin islands from culture to offerings in the commerce and the tourism sectors in other news about the association chamber of commerce and hotel are now separate. During a recent Big Story interview with the interim chair of the hotel and the tourism side, Mrs. Sharon Flax Brutus, she gave us a brief insight. The thing is, um, it's something that we've been working on for close to a year. Mm -hmm. And um, the BVI CCHA, um, they've endorsed mm -hmm. what, um, what we've done. Mm -hmm. They've endorsed um, the morphing of the uh, hotel and tourism side to um, 
you know, to those of us in the industry who our main goal is to help the industry. Um, it is to work alongside the BVI Tourist Board, industry partners, and by extension, the government, so that um, we remain as one of the top Caribbean destinations. I mean, I'm interim. I'm the interim uh, director for the time being because I believe in, um, you know, in part, in participation. I believe in the industry coming on board. We decide what we want, you know, our logo to look like, what, who we want our board of directors to be, and what we want our focus as an organization to be. I have my ideas, but no woman, no woman is an island. Yeah. You know? In 2022, the board of directors of the BVI Chamber of Commerce and Hotel Association, BVI CCHA, initiated a working group to explore the feasibility of establishing an organization to represent the tourism sector, a main economic pillar of the Virgin Islands economy. The findings of the group confirmed that the hospitality industry stakeholders were re resoundingly in favor of the initiative. A roadmap for the formation of a hotel and a tourism association was produced and presented to the board of directors and is subsequently approved in December of 2022. The official launch of the BVI Hotel and the Tourism Association is still in its planning stages. One of the Virgin Islands' respected public figures was laid to rest on Saturday, March 4, 2023. During the pre- and official funeral services, one thing was echoed by those who paid a tribute. L.U.R. Rhymer B.M. played a great role in the Constitution reform of 2007. I recall as we prepared for the last round of negotiations between the U.K. and BVI for our current Constitution, Elihu, as one of the commissioners, the commission, of course, was led by Justice Ferrara, sitting with the advisory team that I led and working out our best arguments to make to the UK. I can't forget that profound sentence which Elihu thought we should lead with. Constitutional advance has historically been preceded by economic advance. And boy, did Elihu argue his points with the United Kingdom. Often in that falsetto tone that we all remember when he waxed especially passionate. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, the result of those negotiations was excellent. Elihu contributed so much to the advancement of this territory, whether as an educator, as a public servant, hotelier, tourism and business leader, and simply as Elihu, the citizen. I would just say, I would just recommend that you pull out the 2007 report and go to the historical constitutional chapter. And Lorna, in a sense, touched on this, because what that demonstrates is that with greater control autonomy usually came greater development and that is part of the legacy of these Virgin Islands which LU captured so well as a scholar as an intellect and as a person who had a gift of the language particularly in its written form District 9 representative, Honorable Vincent O. Wheatley, memorialized a different side of Rhymer. Brother Cecil was not educated, but he made sure. Elio was his only son. He made sure that his work of not being formally educated would not be Elio's legacy. He made sure he was educated. He was one of the first North Song boys to go to school in Tautola. One of the very, very first. Of course, many others follow. I think Ashburn and Eileen will follow in the second tier of persons who went to school in Tartola. From there, he went on to school in Antigua and later on to Canada. Now, Elio had two other buddies, and I'm glad to see the families are here. Elio, Arnold Rafty, O'Neill Restam, and Elton Georges. Those three were like the young talks back in the day. Powerful, influential, energetic educated everyone respected those three boys and they were like 
You, you couldn't separate him. The late L.U. Reimer was laid to rest at North Sound, Virgin Gorda. That has brought us down to the end of this edition of Front Row. Remember, you can follow us as well on Facebook at JTV Channel 55 and on YouTube at Jaffix Television JTV. I'm Kathy Richards. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official Bank of Paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions, which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. <laughs> mm, there are many ways to enjoy life. Like so many ways to count on popular. Plug into Digicel Plus and get even more entertainment with Disney Plus included. The best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic all in one place. Whenever you want, plug into Plus to enjoy Disney Plus and much more with a home fiber bundle. Sign up today, Digicel Plus.